G'day guys, Keith here from Mirror Effect Detail, here with a new ceramic coat wash video. Um, trying to get a bit of an improvement to my last one, um, make it a bit shorter as well, because not everyone has a an hour to, to watch all my videos that are very long. So I'm just going to be doing a wash video on my daily driver slash work vehicle. Before washing any car guys, I recommend you just spend 30 seconds going around the vehicle and just giving it an inspection, see what sort of stuff you're, you're fighting against and um, once you've done that then you can get into it and uh, begin washing. So let's just do that. So I'm just checking the brake dust on the wheels here, these low areas of the doors where tar can build up, going around the car looking for swells, water spots and just giving it a general look, you know, how's the plastics going, are they starting to fade, is there tree seeds or tar or, you know, things that I haven't noticed. It's just really good to go around the car and, and touch base with it every now and then. So moving on to things you'll need. So you're going to want one or two buckets with a quality microfiber wash mitt, high pressure sprayer and a snow foam cannon attachment. Your snow foam detergent of choice, I use Envy Snow. Drying towel, air blower ideally for getting in those hard to reach areas and the wheels and just a wheel cleaner of choice. So you'll also need a good location to wash the car in. So you want to do it ideally under cover or under a shade sail or carport. Um, and you don't you want to be far away from trees. Now since making this video, I've since had a shade sail installed. But in this video here, it wasn't quite done yet. So I just parked as far away from trees as I could. And because I wasn't directly under any cover, I waited till maybe about 4 o'clock, 4.30, so that there was zero direct sunlight. All right, moving on to the wheels. So I start off by spraying the perimeter of the rim where the tire meets the rim. And then I move into spraying the spokes. Now I move sort of to the left of the rim and then I move to the right. This is so I can get sort of both the up and down sides of the spoke because um, if you're sort of facing the rim you won't sort of get both sides of the spoke. Um, you can spray a bit inside the wheel arch too if you want um, and try to get some inside the barrel of the rim and the wheel nuts to make sure those areas get cleaned as well. Now obviously guys, especially if these rims aren't coated, you're not going to remove 100% of brake dust with this method, um, but this is just a maintenance wash, it's not a uh, aim for perfection or any kind of extravagant detail, um, this is a really quick and effective method to really get the rims a lot cleaner than they were without really having to get on your hands and knees and you know scrub each face of the spoke and get your, your wheel woolies out and, and, and you know scrub the barrel and, and everything else. None of that, you just don't want to spray and rinse. Um, and this, this is where you're really benefiting if you coat the rims in something like Fireball Talon, which is something I offer. It's going to make this clean a lot more effective and the drying a lot easier and just the brake dust accumulation slower. So it's really, really worthwhile getting the fireball tell on. And now we're rinsing. I always start up to down. So I rinse the wheel arches. If you want to brush these with a wheel brush, the wheel arches, go ahead. A lot of mud can accumulate in that area. I get this mud flap and then I start to come down and rinse the tire off and then moving on to rinsing the spokes and the barrel and also those wheel nuts. Make sure again you go left and right of the spokes to really get every side of the spoke. You can see the hydrophobics here of the rim. The water's quickly sort of um, sheeting off. I'm doing a little demo here to, to try to demonstrate it. Okay guys, this step is totally optional. I'm using a ceramic spray and rinse chemical here to extend the life of the wheel coating and give a topper layer. Um, I'm using Hydro Carpro Hydro 2 here. Um, this is again, once again, totally optional step here uh, that you can do if you want to extend your wheel coating.
All right, guys, moving on to extremely important step. This is your pre-rinse. Guys, if you want to avoid all those swirls and just terrible paint, this is the step you don't want to skimp on. You want to make sure every single square inch of the vehicle is properly and thoroughly rinsed. And the best way to I, I kind of accomplish that is by doing this kind of um, left up, up to down, left to right sort of technique. So I'm starting at the sort of uh, driver's side part of my vehicle's tray because I drive a ute. And I'm starting from the top of that and working my way down in like a left to right pattern. Now I'm doing the roof because that's the highest point uh, past the tray. Getting every single square inch of that sail plane of the roof. And I think the coating I've got on here is like NV Jet or something because I constantly am trying new coatings. Here's a perfect example of that left to right up to down motion. This is the best way to make sure you get every square inch of the vehicle pre-rinsed. Super important. So you're not massaging grit into the paint when you actually, you know, dry the car or use your wash mitt on the car. So just work your way around the whole vehicle doing that. And once that's done, we can begin getting a snow foam lather on the car. Okay, Keith. What actually does the snow foam do? Well, I'm so glad you guys asked that. The primary function of the snow foam cannon, or just snow foaming in general, is really just to put on a meaningless theatrical display uh, to justify ludicrous detailing prices, or to just make people in your, you know, immediate vicinity kind of perk their ears up and, and feel bad that you're out there, you know, getting this Japanese bukake going on your car and their car isn't clean and it's it's dusty as. So um, that's the primary function of the snow foam. Now the secondary and slightly important function as well is that it's going to create a nice lubricant on the car once again to minimize swirling and it's also going to help you know, dissolve things like traffic film and any other residues on the car, um, you know, so we get a nice swirl free and good clean once we get to the contact stage. But um, this is really fun and enjoyable guys, it's probably the funnest part of, of the wash is just getting out there and frothing up the car. Now, the consistency of the snow foam here is pretty crap, I'll be honest with you. I've probably diluted the, the, the Envy snow in the snow foam cannon way too hard. You want to aim for like 9 to 1 dilution ratio, which means 9 parts water, 1 part chemical. I've probably got half that here, guys, because the, it's very thin and not very. it doesn't have that shaving cream consistency. But regardless, it's still going to provide lubrication and it's still going to provide that, you know, traffic film dissolving ability. After the rinse, I've got my bucket here. I'm just using the one bucket wash method, which is going to make so many detailers angry. I've already put some wash concentrate in there, so I'm just agitating it with the pressure washer to get that lather and those bubbles and, and all, that, all that good stuff. Um... Uh, so this is the contact wash stage of the wash and the reason why I've added this in, I did make a previous wash video which didn't have this, is because you do need the contact wash to remove traffic film and residues from the car. Um, now back to that point that I was making with the one bucket wash, guys I put so much effort into lubricating the paintwork with snow foam and also doing a very thorough pre-rinse that if my car isn't too dirty and I've got a ceramic coated vehicle I don't feel the need to use two buckets um, and for those that aren't familiar the two bucket is where you rinse the wash mitt in a rinse bucket prior to putting it into the wash bucket um, 
I've done vehicles in the past that had no swells on them. I've used this wash method, brung them into the studio, given them a thorough look over with the inspection light, and I couldn't see any swells, guys. So I think this wash method is fine as long as you are doing that thorough pre-rinse and the snow foam lubrication plus wash bucket lubrication. Now guys, of course, you do what you feel comfortable with your vehicle. If you feel like doing a two bucket wash or certainly if the car is really hammered and has been neglected or has been taken off road, absolutely I would be doing a two bucket wash. Um, but yeah, I'll let you guys make that decision. I made the call here to just use one bucket because the car was almost clean as is. Um, and again, I took those steps with the pre-rinsing and that to make sure there's no swirls. Now onto the actual wash technique advice guys. Try to use minimal pressure when washing the car with that wash mitt or when touching the car with any kind of contact, whether it's you know, you're waxing the car or drying the car, you want to use minimal pressure, guys. Uh, that's really, really going to help with um, reducing swells and honestly, there really isn't that much more benefit with applying a lot of pressure compared with using minimal pressure. I've started up to down and I'm just working away at each panel. Now, a tip, guys, you can flip the wash mitt and you can get another one or two panels in by flipping the wash mitt before having to re-dunk. And really, if you ever do, like when you're at the stage where you're getting to the low side of the car, um, you know, the low side of the doors or, you know, near the wheels, the wheel wells, that is also another cue for me to re-dunk the mitt as those areas is where a lot of tar and you know grit can build up but aside from that guys you work your way around the car and this this stage should really only take a few minutes it goes by really quickly Once the contact wash with the wash mitt is done, of course, we're going to rinse all those suds off the car. Guys, there isn't too much to say here. You just want to start up to down and be thorough and make sure everything is rinsed. This includes all those cracks and crevices, fuel cap area, the rubbers around the window seals and things, your front bezel you know, around the license plate, a lot of suds gets trapped behind that. Um, the wheel wells, wheel arches, anywhere where soap suds and things could be hiding, you want to be doing a thorough rinse. Now, there's two really important stages in the wash process that are critical. The first one is the pre-rinse the second one is this right here, doing a proper dry. If you don't dry your car properly, the car is a write-off. You're going to get hard water spotting that is eventually going to turn into water etching, which is where the high pH compounds in the water, which is the calcium and lime scale that's in your tap water, sits, uh, sits on the paint and eventually buries and burns itself in the paint. It's most notably seen on black cars. So what I do before getting my microfiber drying towel is I use this Milwaukee air blower to get the bulk of the water off in hard to reach areas. This includes crevices, cracks, uh, the wind, windscreen wipers, in the wheel arches, in the, the wheels, the tires, you know, all those little gaps, um, front bezel, tail lights, headlights. This is really useful for just knocking over the water in those areas and this is where the ceramic coating really shines because without that hydrophobic water behavior this air blower would be doing bugger all. Um, 
So that is one of the highest value aspects of the ceramic coating is the ability to use this air blower efficiently. Once I've gone around and done all those cracks and crevices and wheels with the air blower, I bust out my drying towel. So as I was trying to explain there with the really crappy low volume, uh, when drying vertical panels, this is doors, anything that's upright, not the roof or the bonnet, you want to uh, not do what I call the mime, where you're holding the towel, you're pressing it against those vertical panels and then you're kind of smudging and rubbing it over those panels which is applying way over the top force that's necessary and it also creates the risk that your bottom of the towel is going to drag against the ground um, because you don't have as much control on the bottom um, this is particularly going to be relevant to people driving low cars and maybe a bit harder with a ute uh, but regardless the better method is to hold the middle of the towel with one hand and use the other hand to gently um, glide it over the paint um, which is you're using the least amount of force necessary you've got complete control of the height of the towel from the ground so it's not going to scrape the ground and then pick up all the grit that's on the ground now with the horizontal panels this is your bonnet your roof and a tray if you've got one. Um, the best method possible is to just fly the towel out and keep it in that rectangular shape and you're just going to drag it towards you. Um, this is so... This, this makes drying the whole bonnet in just a couple swipes. You're talking seconds. Um, it, applies, it applies no pressure to the paint, just the weight of the towel. It's, it does a good job, it absorbs all the water, these towels are amazing, um, and it's just satisfying. So that's what I do for those horizontal panels. And yeah guys, just work your way around the, the, the car, get, in, get into those, um, again, front bezel areas where water likes to drip down a lot. And once we've done all the panels of the car, I recommend just quickly opening up all the doors and getting those door jams and door sills dried. So guys, that wraps up the wash. Um, I wanted this video to go for maybe five to eight minutes. We're up to the 18th minute and we're still going so I don't really think I can do it guys it's it's literally impossible for me to mention all the small details that I feel like are extremely important but also keep the video short so well when the when the when the next video comes out I'll have another go at keeping it shorter but um, for now guys I'm sorry that it's this long hopefully you guys followed along pretty well as always, get in contact if you have any questions regarding products, wash advice, wash tips, um, general detailing and queries, and the rest. Um, and with that said, guys, I really hope that this helps you with keeping the car clean and washing in a way that's safe. It's going to prolong that coating and also to do it in a way that's somewhat time efficient, not having to get on your hands and knees and scrub the wheels, easier drying with the blower and, and so on and so forth. You can also go a bit further here, guys. If you're a bit of an enthusiast, you can dress your wheels. You can apply a, like a, a wax topper. You can, you can do so many things, guys. You can dress the plastics. Um, and obviously, there's a whole lot of work you can do on the interior as well. So... I'll leave that up to you guys. I just wanted to make this video to give you the bare bones advice on how to wash the car effectively and safely. Um, with that said, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.